Thank you very much. I just want to congratulate Manal very quickly. What an inspiring story. I think her top five are all of our top five going forward. Congrats, Manal, for representing Arab females and putting us in such a prominent light. And I want to welcome this very prestigious and esteemed panel. We're going to discuss the power of public-private partnerships to improve community health. And I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Al-Kabi, Mr. Shihada, Dr. Al-Shahi, and Mr. Thambe. Now, Dr. Nawal, I'll start by asking you about the potential benefits of PPPs compared to government-run healthcare systems. Why are PPPs more beneficial? So, there's a lot of benefits when it comes to healthcare, starting from pre-discovery or research all the way to the delivering the highest quality of healthcare. So, at the initial stage, when you are thinking to discover new drug, new tools, you will do it in a lab. Usually, it is in academia. Those will be moved eventually to the pharmaceuticals. And here where the, uh, the collaboration will work, or sometimes it's between public and uh, private or public and other companies. Delivering the, the tool or the drug or the vaccine, or it also uh, it increase, uh, this collaboration increases the effectiveness and the efficiency of delivering anything new. The decision with the private company usually rapid, and it is not like in the government where th things slow down, so both will benefit. They share a lot of things in terms of resources and cost and benefits. Uh, so eventually you will be able to deliver the best health care possible with this type of collaboration. I'd like to give an example. Uh, during the pandemic, we conducted one of the largest clinical trials where we tested COVID, inactivated COVID-19 vaccine. And it was a collaboration between the government, Department of Health, Ministry of Health, uh, hospitals like Al Saha hospitals, and a private uh, a G42 with the CRO through IRIS and international pharmaceutical, which was Sinopharm. So this is a clear collaboration between private and public, nationally and internationally. And we managed to conduct one of the largest clinical trials, and we managed eventually to vaccinate our community before any other country. So it, in fact, improves efficiency, effectiveness, and it saves time. Now, Mr. Shihada, what would you say are the opportunities for innovation and for entrepreneurship in healthcare through these public-private partnerships? I think uh, this is a very important point, but I will start with the innovation piece, because the innovation with this relationship between the public and the private, I think there will be major role on the private sector to bring the innovation, the new technology, the new medical solution uh, for the healthcare sector. But also, it will rely a lot on the public sector to, to put the right regulatory process, as well as the infrastructure capabilities do to ensure that those in new medical solution will come uh, as soon as possible to, to our industry or to, to our region. But also, back to Dr. Nawal's example, the COVID-19, it was really a good example where during the pandemic period that the, the private sector developed a new solution for the pandemic, for the COVID-19, and without the support from the public sector to ensure that the fast track approval, uh, the endorsement from the government will not be able as the two parties to achieve the great result that have been uh, achieved already. From the other perspective, when it will come to the entrepreneurship, the, the new starter companies, when they are focusing to bring a new solution in terms of digital, in terms of the biotechnology, those starter companies, they need to have an access by partnering with uh, well-established private players within the area. This will help them to have the right funds, to, to have the, the know-how, the expertise from the private sector. But again, the public sector need to accelerate this process of the approval to ensure those startups or the entrepreneurs 
that will bring the new solution to our region as soon as possible. So the private sector is bringing the technology, whereas the public sector is hopefully bringing in faster approvals and speeding up the regulatory process. And Dr. Al Shahi, what would you say are the major operational challenges in implementing PPPs in healthcare, and how can we address these major challenges? It's a good question. Okay. Um, I must say it depends. It depends on many factors. You know, um, healthcare. Um, Industry is, has a lot of fundamental activities that make it unique compared to other industries. Um, at the same time, it depends on what blocks in the healthcare system that the partnerships uh, take place in. So uh, all these factors, uh, you know, definitely will play um, um, roles in uh, selecting what challenges that we are facing. But in general talking, I think um, uh, cultures is very important. Uh, cultures eats a strategy for breakfast. And um, most of public uh, sectors, their uh, primary motivators is affordability and uh, access. We will come to the private sectors. Uh, profitability is the, the main driver. And there's nothing wrong with this. But how to match these two cultures and mindset, I think this is uh, very challenging for the leaders to, to manage. Um, uh, competencies on both sides. Uh, when you ask private sector to enter the public um, area or public field, uh, they require some uh, skills and capabilities to, uh, to win. So they need to be partners with, um, with the public to help them to fill these gaps. And the opposite is right. There's no doubt that um, uh, uh, private sector, they have more access or more flexibility to the to the knowledge and to techniques, but still they have, uh, they, they have a gap how to practice in the profit system. Um, this, is, uh, this is major, major two um, areas that I think um, um, it's, it's required. One is taking a lot of time. We, have, uh, we are very expert in making this uh, relationship and we are very proud to say this, maybe some of partners sitting here and listening to me, Developing a business plan and developing business models to, um, uh, on the ground, this is a very difficult thing because you're getting two, um, two companies with different goals, different objectives, and trying to make it workable. And this usually takes months for us to, to achieve. So I must say this is the three ma major things that we are facing. So cultures and competencies are the major challenges, but if you develop a solid business plan before entering your PPP, you should come out on the other side okay. So, sorry again? But you should just develop a solid business plan before Correct. actually entering Correct. into the PPP. Correct. Correct. Mr. Thumbe, what would you say are the most effective metrics in measuring the success of PPPs in improving community health? Thank you, uh, Lamia. And, uh, Thank you for inviting me for the Forbes uh, Middle East Healthcare Summit. About Tumbe Healthcare, Tumbe is one of the largest healthcare providers in the academic setup in the country. We have over 800 beds, managed over seven hospitals across clinics, all the specialities. I want to give you the answer through examples of our collaboration with the government. So, we, we've come to know, be known as the crisis management partner for different governments. So as taking an example of COVID, we had given one of our hospitals as a PPP in Dubai. So it was the crisis management hospital of the Dubai government during COVID. And the measure, measuring elements for that project was completely different to you know, what we were, would otherwise measure during a project. So this was basically the crisis management hospital. We needed to maximize the utilization of the hospital. So utilization was generally uh, what we were monitoring. We were making sure that you know, patients were immediately brought in and uh, you know, being able to be treated and discharged as soon as possible. So this was a different project. I would like to take another example where you know, we were looking at cost in terms of the project. So with the Ajman government, we were working on bringing down the cost of uh, medical visa checkups, so where we brought down the cost by almost 40%, and it was considered one of the most successful projects and was replicated across the other Emirates as well. So 
it depends on the project, the objectives, and the uh, metrics changes. Great examples of successful PPPs. And Dr. Nawal, why are PPPs so effective in this way? And how do they really improve efficiency and effectiveness in healthcare delivery, as you mentioned earlier? Thank you for this question. So the reason is PPP is more effective because one, uh, if you think of the resources, you will mobilize all type of resources around the same time, expertise, financial resources, the latest research, the latest discovery, um, AI, innovation, you would be able to mobilize the resources within a very short period of time with this type of collaboration. Two, we, the government will benefit a lot of, from the private when it comes to assessing any project or even their own employee because uh, the private usually depends on the performance driven rather than time or, uh, or salary. Uh, so that also will improve their efficiency. The private, we could benefit from them, uh, the public could benefit from the private when it comes to marketing and communication. So, for example, during pandemic, we can conduct um, a campaign using the skills of the private in conducting marketing and communication and using the latest tool to reach the public and teach them. So there are many ways uh, that both parties can teach, uh, learn from each other, but I think the private can teach the public and government a lot of things and avoid the delay. Uh, so everything can be faster and more efficient. So these PPPs ultimately facilitate faster implementation, resources are optimized, costs are reduced. And Mr. Shihada, how would you say that PPPs really facilitate the development and commercialization of new healthcare technologies? I believe this is the most complex part of this relationship because the um, the private sector, they are focusing more in the development of the new medical solution. For example, I will take the drug sector as an example. So uh, the drug discovery for, uh, for any new medical solution, it will take many years through the clinical trials. And there is a risk this will be a successful solution for any therapeutic area or no. But from the other side, I think the public sector need to, to play a very, very important role in the future, where we would like to create a relationship of uh, shared risk resources, where the very complicated area of the drug discovery, the public sector need to take part of this risk in terms of the res during the research phase, as well as um, to give the access for the private sector to do the clinical trials in our region. So we have a lot of infrastructure capabilities from the government uh, for the research centers, and we can see very uh, important examples within our region. I think to give the access from the public sector to private sector to do their research in those centers will give more acceleration for the drug discovery, for example. But the most important piece, I believe that when we have early engagement from the public sector during the developmental phase, this will, will create more trust from the public about the new medical solution. And we have a good example, for example, in Saudi Arabia, when the government announced the, the Vision 2030, they highlighted different therapies area that where this relationship between the public and the private need to to focus on bringing this to localized in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And for example, I will take the example of insulin. So now the announced, the government announced that the insulin will be manufactured locally in the Saudi Arabia. But the public, when they will think that this will be only owned by private sector, will not get the trust to be used as a, as a new medical solution localized in Saudi Arabia. But when the public engage with the private sector, this will help building the trust. And eventually, back to your point, this will accelerate the commercialization of those in new medical solutions in our region. So this relationship needs to be 
built up between the development and the commercialization to ensure whatever the solution that we are bringing to our region, by the end of the day, it will bring the benefit for patients as well as for both private and public sector. Absolutely, and so much effort goes into structuring and building these PPPs. How can we ensure their sustainability, Dr. Shahi? After all of the efforts of negotiating and implementing them, how can we ensure that these PPPs are stable? You know, Ramia, it's um, um, a partnership in healthcare industry. The probability of, uh, probability of success is not that high comparing to other industry. So there is um, a big risk of failure of this relationship. And this is because of many challenges and the healthcare sector is uh, very dynamic and the demands and the expectations are changing um, every day. And the effects of healthcare is not just a vertical project, it's uh, extend to the other areas, social economics, you know, environmental. So that's why all the time the challenge is happening there. So it's, it's a must to build the trust and transparency with the partner. This is a must. Um, the framework that we use in the, in the medical office and the group is, is, number one is we develop clear and define clear metrics and KPIs. And this um, metrics, it takes time to get both party, you know, agreed in. But this is a very important and, um, and you know, um, uh, and elements that we need to clear it. The most important things in this area is allocations, the financial risk, because this is, uh, if it's not clearly defined at the beginning, then it will be coming a troubles in the, in the future. To sustain this, you need to be clearly defined this. Uh, number two, what we do is we are um, implementing, um, we always implementing this continuous process improvement um, uh, activities. Um, it's not just a project, you put it on the grounds and you follow. You need to always continue seeing what's the changes happening there. And you review this with the partners and try to get enough solutions in a swift way to not get this gap is increasing. And one um, unique thing that we do in the medical office, and maybe this is an industry of, of health industry rather than others, is we use also um, uh, uh, qualitative uh, reports. So the first two things is you need the uh, data, you need to make sure that's valid. When you share it with your partners, you have evidence on this. But we also use the um, uh, qualitative data like uh, surveys or feedbacks. We believe that there is a lot of, uh, or some areas that maybe is not covered with the first two tools. And by opening surveys or feedback from stakeholders, you might identify areas. If you do these things, I think the benefit will be for both. And it takes time, it takes effort, it required, uh, you know, from both sides leadership understand this to achieve the, the outcome that we are aiming to. Now, profitability is also important in PPPs. And Mr. Thambay, I'd like to know your thoughts on how we can ensure that public-private partnerships really prioritize the well-being of communities over profit maximization. Absolutely. I mean, like uh, like you mentioned ahead uh, of time as well, that, you know, PPPs are very important for the society because there are certain skills, certain technologies that are available maybe in the private sector or in the government sector that can be uh, jointly utilized. And for the private sector, it comes down to profitability to a certain extent, whereas the government has other objectives, and that's where the, the meeting point is very important. That you know, it, a successful project there are very is very hard. Uh, the successful projects are generally where it's absolutely clear what kind of profitability is the private sector expecting out of this, and what is the government willing to pay for that. You know, and uh, we've we've been very clear whenever we've done projects with the government, we are you know we we sort of clearly tell them this is what is going to happen. At the end of the day, we need to sustain ourselves, and this is what the at the end, the profitability that will be maintained. And generally, the government is, in the UAE especially, is absolutely clear about the objectives of that project. And, you know, we make sure that this is a successful project implementation. So it's a delicate balance. We have run out of time. I just want one comment from each of our panelists about the key success factors for PPPs in healthcare in one sentence. 
I would say national and international collaboration. Excellent. National and international collaboration. Um, for me, I would say uh, the strong governance and accountability between the private and the public sectors. Strong governance and accountability between private and public sector. Dr. Ashahi. I would say uh, leadership. Leadership from Dr. Ashahi. Open communication and collaboration. Open communication parties. and collaboration. Wonderful suggestions on making sure that PPPs are implemented, successful, and sustainable. Thank you very much to our esteemed panelists for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.